in honor of the presidential debate, we're going to talk about how politics affects real estate. I'm only going to use one example for each party, Republican and Democrats. I'm not picking a side. I'm not going to voice my opinions because that's not what matters here. What matters is how each party affects real estate. And regardless of who wins, I still care about my business and how I'm going to keep growing. So point number one, we're going to talk about Donnie Trump and how he imposed a federal ban on evictions. So this deeply affected somebody like myself because I'm a landlord. I rent to tenants, whether commercial or residential, it doesn't matter. A national eviction moratorium means that I can't evict anybody and within his guidelines is that I cannot evict anybody that makes under $99,000 a year, which is the general public. Right, So the general public cannot be evicted from one of my properties if they make under $99,000 a year and they faced financial hardship up until December 31st. Again, doesn't really matter in New York because you got Cuomo who also imposed this and everybody's imposing all these rental laws and it's not a landlord friendly state anyway. But out of New York, I mean like in Texas and in Ohio and those super landlord friendly states, I mean people must be going nuts. So. That's one of the difficulties of what Trump imposed, and it's been a trickle-down effect because people think they could do whatever they want. Let's move on to Mr. Biden. Mr. Biden doesn't want there to be 1031 exchanges anymore. In my opinion, one of the worst things that could possibly happen in real estate. A 1031 exchange is when you sell a property for a profit, right? Like I sold a property for 700 grand. I made a $300,000 profit. I bought it for four, uh, rented out for a year, put into it 60K, made the 60K back, sold it for seven, I made 300 grand. Now, I don't wanna pay taxes on 300 grand. So what do I do? I stimulate the economy by pushing that 300 grand back into another property and even more money because a 1031 exchange, in a 1031 exchange, you have to spend a dollar more than your profit in the following property and in in essence, you don't have to pay taxes on that money, but it is passed on to the next tier. The next time you sell that property, it's just pushed off and then you have to pay it the following time you sell. So it's not like it's gone forever. It's just pushed off in time. Regardless, he wants to get rid of 1031s because he has this idea that all the income from 1031 exchanges for people that make over $400,000 a year, any 1031 exchange that breaks people making over 400,000 a year will be taxed like a regular real estate sale even if they wanna roll it over into another property. I think that's a huge mistake, not only for guys like me, but for the big, big players, because now what's going to incentivize them to buy more property and create more jobs? Nothing, just making more money. But what if they want to sit on dry powder? What if they just want a lot of money in the bank now to buy stocks or just to live a lavish lifestyle? They're not going to be stimulating the economy by buying more properties, building more, doing more things because they have no tax incentive to do so. And if you look historically uh, in tax incentive based programs, whatever the government incentivizes, the state, the counties, it dramatically increases economic efficiency, uh, building, um, acquisition of supplies, material, labor, uh, all the common resources that we all live off of uh, are stimulated nonstop by people pushing more money into building through tax incentives. So I think that's a huge mistake. Mr. Biden, that's a huge mistake. Donnie Trump, I'm really upset you did that, but I'm just a little, a little fish in a big pond doing what I can. I don't know too much more about everything else these guys are doing. Uh, if you guys wanna chime in and like drop some knowledge that you guys know, mo more, most people know more than I know uh, when it comes to politics. I let the professionals deal with it. My accountant knows what, the, uh, what happens if you don't pay this or you don't do that. So when I get to know through learning from him and I listen and learn, I just do really good deals. That's what I'm here for. Whenever something happens, right before it happens, I get a briefing from my accountant, from my lawyers, and uh, I get to learn that way. I try and stay out of the loop in politics much because at the end of the day, it's not what I deeply care about. So, uh, if you guys have anything to say or any opinions or whatever, chime in, let me know. I'd love to learn and uh, I'm always open to hear more. Thanks, peace.